solve the mysteries of the universe. In just a moment, we'll be talking to two professors who've had a go at answering that very question. And if anyone can, they can. Professor Brian Cox and Professor Jeff Forshaw have written a book which aims to make quantum mechanics easy to understand. Here's a look at Brian in Hawaii explaining how heat keeps a planet alive. You can smell the volcanic ash coming into the into the helicopter and everywhere you look it looks like a <laughs> it's almost like an apocalyptic scene this volcano is kilauea which means spewing it's been erupting almost continuously since 1983. Now you can see molten rock flowing down the, the side of the mountain just cutting its way through the trees this might look like widespread destruction, but volcanic eruptions are Earth's geological heartbeat. Active volcanoes make our planet a vibrant, living world. That is the most spectacular demonstration of our planet being geologically alive that I've ever seen. And Brian and Jeff are with us now. Very good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. See, the thing is, Brian, if you're in a helicopter, over a volcano and you're looking at all that stuff that is gripping come to a book about a subject to a lot of people which is sort of alien that's a big ask isn't it well the thing about quantum theory has got a bad reputation the moment you say quantum theory or quantum mechanics people <laughs> sort of like yeah. that. actually though it is our best theory of the way that the world works c completely so everything we know of, other than gravity, everything. You know, why is that solid? Why don't we fall through this chair? Why do silicon chips work? Why is a rainbow the colour that it is? All those things are described by this theory. And so what we wanted to do was write a book that said it's not actually that difficult to understand. And you should... You we should want to understand it because it's our best description of the world that we live in. Because when I did physics at school, it used to make my head hurt. I, it, it just used to bounce off my head. I didn't understand it at all. But I have read a bit of your book. And Hold on, how far did you get? I got well, a long way. No, 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 no. <laughs> the middle. Yeah. I got, let me find the picture. I got, I got to the page with all the um, equations on it. No, anyway, it's in there somewhere. And I looked at it and I thought, you know, that, that's me, Dom. I just don't get it. But... What you try and do is, it's like you say, you explain why, you explain, explain about gravity. Simple things like, you know, what makes an apple fall at a certain point, which makes it at least a little bit more relatable to. So what we're trying to do here is explain the rules of a game, right? That's like kind of what, what scientists, scientists are always doing. They, they, they treat the universe as a big puzzle, and they're trying to work out what the rules of the game are. They're like trying to figure out what the rules of a game of chess are just by looking at the moving, moving to the pieces. Why do we need to know? And it's because it teaches us something really remarkable about the way the universe is. You know, we think that, we're, that things, we think we know what's going on, don't we? We look at things, we think that that cup exists. It's there, it's going to... Actually, if we really ask, what, what, what is it made out of? And uh, how do those atoms work? We, 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 we're shown a world which is nothing like our common sense view of the world. The, the, the reality is, is, is so weird and surreal that not only... We, we've been battered into it by years of experiments and the results of experiments and we've been forced to accept this remarkable picture of the world it's a picture where particles can be in two places at the same time for example okay go on then yeah, there, there's, there's, a, a, there's a nice uh, sort of beginning yeah. point for us two particles in the same uh, no pa one particle one particle in two places at once one it's, place. go on then it's chapter two stranger than that it's, it's a wonderful thing if you look at your finger in front of you it's made of these particles that are described yeah. in that book they're, in a very real sense, they're exploring the entire universe from one instant to the next. And we understand how from that bizarre, anarchic statement, the solidity of your finger, the fact that it stays roughly where it is, how all that emerges from this one rule, which tells you they're exploring the universe from one instant to the next. It's beautiful. I mean, what thing. do you mean? When, when you say they're exploring oh, the universe, really? what are they doing? There's a, there's a, there's a problem. They're hopping around. They're, 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 they're. It's, it's simultaneously in principle, actually, everywhere in the universe, okay. every particle there. But, it, but, but, it but we understand how that all collapses down to stay as the So it's the sum total of all oh. those explorations, if you like, all those parallel worlds, all those parallel, parallel possibilities. The particle could be here, could be here, could be here, could be here. When you add 
blend them all together, you get the concrete reality that we experience. So uh, underlying it is this stuff. And it has to be this way because we couldn't even build computers without it, transistors. You know, oh, it's not esoteric knowledge, it's the, really practical. The, the answer to your question, it's a serious answer to your, your question that you asked earlier about, you know, why why should people care about this? That Carl Sagan, who's a great hero of mine, once said that our whole society is built on science, right? Everything we take for granted, from healthcare to the way we build houses, computer, everything. So to have a society where people don't understand the basis of everything, it's, it's undemocratic. It's a terrible so, position to be in, so it's very important people have some touchstone on it. You're both professors. Do you, do you instinctively look at things completely differently from mere mortals? So, for example, when we watched the Ronaldo goal that went in and we, everyone remarks on the brilliant position he was in, the, the running, whatever, do you think about, do you think about, you know, head, ball, the particles, how it's, you know, the, the energies that are involved, do you look at things always instinctively it's, it's fun in a different have way? Have you looked at the ball, at the Euro ball? Because that's interesting. Is it? Because it's made up of lots and lots of small surfaces, so it's kind of got a rougher edge around it, which makes it fly straight more It does dip a lot, doesn't it? And it, cur it's, it can, they can make it curve, but mm. that's physics, isn't it? So it is. Yeah, and, and, and uh, one of the great things about being a physicist is that you get to appreciate, you know, the aerodynamics of a football. That's one of the things that you can you can learn about, <laughs> and uh, so so you can take this this you can look at the world, see it in that way that a physicist would see it. And, of course, you, you don't lose out. You get to see it like everybody else sees it, too. Isn't science getting a little bit more rock and roll? I know, obviously, because of your background in a band, everybody will say that to you. But even the book, the design of your book, is designed by a P famous Peter album. Peter Savile, yeah, Peter a very Savile. famous yeah. uh, Manchester designer, designed yeah. all the New Order Joy Division album yeah. covers. Yeah. I think so. I, I think because... At its heart, it, science has been ghettoised a little bit. You know, it's been this is just one of those things that geeks do. But now I think, in a way, everybody's beginning to want to be a geek because actually, science is our description of reality. It is the universe that we live in. On a serious note, it's the foundation of our economy as well. So, so there's a lot there. But on the issue of how how science is presented, whatever, you're both men. I mean, that's been a problem as well, hasn't it? That, that on the whole. Not it's anymore. It's well, it's still predominantly, isn't it? No, how many I don't think professors so. in your in your department? Are, men, uh, are women? Yeah, three or four. Yeah, of not, how many? Not many, out of 50, something like that. Wow. So, well, not, going not on professors, there? actually. Uh, 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 but why uh, is that? Uh, well, this is one of the important things about the image change science is going through at the moment, because if you think that this is a subject run by old men in particular, it puts off young boys and girls from going into the subject. You don't want to be in that environment. It's not like that, though. It it's a, it's a really is a young people subject. And actually, if you go back to our PhD students now, so there is a shift. Um, I, I've taught five PhD students, of which three have been girls, actually. So, so at the younger end now, it's changing, and so it should, but it's, it's, an it's been an image problem. And I hope that's beginning to be dispelled. Glad to see you here this morning. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um,